So usually for me, when Christmas comes along, um, I've already uh, decided on what I would love to to get from <laughs> from my uh, parents or wife or uh, or my relatives, and um, it usually goes a little bit like this: uh, I I see something that I really need and would want in my uh, production and in my workflow, and I'll ask everyone to kind of pitch in to that gift. And Christmas comes along, and uh, we're opening. Our Christmas presents, and I uh, I'm very happy about what so uh, what I'm about to open up, but uh, I already know what it is. So I really wish that someone else made a video like this uh, when I was starting out, uh, and so I want to give something back. So I've compiled a list uh, that you can also download as a PDF uh, in the description. If you want, if you don't want to watch me anymore, uh, just download that and you're done. There's also timestamps down below and uh, in the progress bar thingy uh, that you can jump to if uh, if you already know what you're about to spend. Let's start with our first price point, which is going to be $15 or below. First one's pretty cool. Uh, you might get this one for free even uh there's a reddit link uh, below where you can uh, find like a compiled list of free stuff uh, and uh, so i would download a, a bunch of those maybe do some research and and see what people like from from that list and download what you want and just uh, put it on a memory stick and maybe decorate the memory stick or do something uh i, I, li I linked a memory stick in the description as well if you if you want to grab one and then just give that. And that's gonna show that you've taken time and effort to uh, find stuff that your loved one uh, will enjoy and get some use out of. This next one, uh, I saw uh, Guy Mitchell Moore, uh, another YouTuber, uh, do a, a while back. So I'll link the original video. Um, he used uh, a normal dice to, to kind of uh, jumpstart his uh, melody writing. Uh, and uh, so, I thought to myself, I've, I've seen a lot of different dice on the internet, maybe there's uh, some dice with, which has the correct uh, sides to it. And so I found both someone that has 12 sides, uh, that means you can do like a chromatical uh, melody and, and do some cool stuff there, and also 8-sided dice. Uh, which would uh, which would do the same melody wise, but it would be in a scale. Um, so that's a very cool and little nerdy uh, thing you can um, tell them about. So if you if you didn't understand anything, maybe go watch the video that, that was linked up here uh, from Guy Mishamore doing that, and um, off you go. Now working from a desk maybe all day uh, or as a hobby every night or whenever you feel like it, I find it really really nice to have a place to put my phone and I maybe it's a bit gimmicky but I love uh, being able to see whatever pops up if I get a message or someone calls me uh, and it's really easy and I always know where it is and uh, I'm also charging while I have it on that uh, stand. I myself have a stand from Quadlock that has some charging things built into it but these will work just fine. Now, if your gift recipient uh, went to school and learned music there, he might uh, do uh, scores uh, and write notes by hand, or as uh, as I like to do, I like to write chord uh, progressions and kind of make a map for myself uh, and write it on paper. And so uh, a book with blank sheet paper uh, is a very cool gift. So I found one that has 12 staves and it's a, a good size uh, to write both of those things. When making uh, your own music, uh, sometimes it's a great idea to, to find some uh, instruments and types of things that are a little bit special, that aren't so commonly used. And I found uh, more uh, of those in a later price segment. But uh, one of that I found that's really cheap is uh, this African handshaker that is uh, gonna have like a... Uh, a more nutty sound than your, your normal uh, metal shakers. And that could be a really nice thing uh, to add to the arsenal of your loved one's music. I myself have a lot of different things uh, just lying around that I use bits and bobs here and there and uh, it's, it's always nice to do something physical and use some of your own instruments as well. Okay, last point in the $15 uh, segment is uh, a mic stand but it's a, like a desk a mic stand so i have one here uh, you can barely not see it i think uh that's uh, from k&m uh, which is uh 
$150, uh, and I found one on Amazon that, that's costing like $15, uh, and uh, based on the reviews, it looks like it's it's going to do all right, depending a little bit on the weight of the mic that is going to be used with it. It's super convenient for me to use a desk stand like this uh, whenever I'm jumping on a call or doing some vocals or uh, doing guitars, and then when I'm done, I'm just moving it out of the way, and it's always ready to... Uh, to start to record and that's a major deal to be able to uh, go from your idea to uh, actually recording it in and capturing it uh, in as short of a time as possible. So uh, very, very highly recommended. All right, our next uh, price segment is going to be under 30 bucks uh, and um, there's a lot of cool stuff here. Something that I see all the time in Instagram feeds uh, of studios around the world is these Himalayan salt lamps that are uh, looking beautifully in, in, in rooms with uh, less light. It's, it's something nice to look at beside your monitors, basically. Maybe uh, save up and buy a pair that's going to look really good b beside the uh, monitors of the studio. But this is a cool one. Now I promised more instruments, so I found this uh, African kalimba. It's a thumb piano, you use your thumbs to play with it. And it has a very cool sound, and you can use it to do all sorts of different things. You can even use it more in like a percussive way, uh, depending on how you uh, change up the, uh, the strings and, and mute it and stuff. And you can do all sorts of things, just uh, YouTube some videos. And you can show it when you give it to them. Also from Japan, there's this like whistle kind of thing that's called an ocarina. I think that's how you pronounce it, uh, which also has a very cool sound uh, and uh, is is in, another tool in your uh, toolbox uh, to be able to create uh, music from all around the world. Now we're going to talk about pianos and MIDI pianos and how your loved one gets his melodies into the computer and, and everything uh, at a slightly higher price point. But if he or she doesn't have a uh, sustain pedal, uh, that could be a very cool thing to buy and it's going to open up a lot of possibilities. In my main studio I have a lot of different whiteboards and that is actually a really nice thing to have for a composer or a student of music to be able to jot down ideas or things to do and things to check out and, and so on. And so I found this uh, whiteboard that is part whiteboard, part cork board and uh, that's also very, very, that's, I want that. I'm definitely going to check it out myself. Now let's talk about cables. Uh, you could buy ridiculously uh, expensive cables uh, that have no meaning at all, and you can buy ridiculously cheap cables uh, that has um, a lot of differences, I guess, <laughs> to good cables. And uh, so connectors uh, are, are a big deal, and also a little bit what's inside the cable. And Neutrik is uh, like a claim to be the best. And so this is the cheapest cable I found that has Neutrik connectors. And if you buy this uh, XLR for a microphone um, for your loved one, it's gonna it's gonna basically last for for decades. Okay, we're taking it up a notch and uh, we're looking for great products uh, under a hundred bucks for a musician or a composer. Let's have a look. Now, if your loved one doesn't have a microphone. Uh, that's a good place to start. I'm going to give you two options for some great quality mics that uh, you can do a lot of different things with. They're both going to be dynamic mics, which means that they they, they can work in rooms that aren't, aren't optimal. You don't have to be especially careful with them because they're going to take a beating and they're going to last for a long time. Two options. Uh, option one is if your loved one is a guitar player, uh, then I'm going to recommend this Shure SM57. or if your loved one is a vocalist or uh, playing another instrument, I'm going to recommend a Shure SM58. So only one digit between them. Um, and actually the, the mic itself is the same. It's just the grill on top that's different. So if you buy a 58, you can just screw off the top part. Yes. And uh, you'll basically have a SM57. Now to connect one of those mics uh, to the computer, you would need a sound interface and so if your person doesn't have that uh, then i i would highly recommend this presonus uh interface uh, for 100 bucks it's it's a really great quality and what you get with it and it's a little bit off right now uh as i'm, I'm releasing this video as well so 
Now, if your person is using headphones, uh, which he, he or she probably is, um, I'm going to recommend a product that I am very, very fond of, um, that I think is a great, great investment. Uh, it's called Sonoworks and it's uh, about 99 euros. So that is um, uh, around this amount of dollars. <laughs> and it's basically going to transform a, a lot of different headsets into um, something that's easier to mix on. Be sure to check out uh, whether or not the headset that your loved one has already uh, is supported. Uh, and if it's not, I'm going to show you some headsets later on uh, that that are. Now, this is the last instrument that I found, but it's a great, great value. It's called a steel tongue drum, and you can use it by playing with the uh, mallets that, that come with it, but, or you can actually use it by uh, playing it with your hands and using it more like a percussion instrument. That's how I would use it. It's another tool for your toolbox, and it looks great. It comes in different colors as well. Now, if your loved one is more into composing and using orchestral instruments, he or she would most likely want to use some sort of controller to control the dynamics and the vibrato and all sorts of small details. And a, a really cool gadget that enables you to do that is the Korg Nano Control 2. And uh, I have one right here and I use it every day. It's a, it's a great product. Now we're looking into the uh, final price segment, which is going to be above $100. And that's maybe going to be gifts that you can combine uh, from a lot of people uh, or have it be a, like an anniversary gift or something. It's, uh, but it's definitely going to give your loved one uh, value in his music production and composing. So I've talked about getting a cable, getting a mic or getting an interface uh, as a gift. There's also an option of getting all three in a package and that's going to set you back around 170 bucks for this particular uh, model. And I think it's a great, great, great value. You even get a shock mount, I think, which is awesome. Uh, it's a very good value and I, I it's the same uh, interface that I uh, talked about earlier. Now, if you had a look at the Nano Control 2 uh, uh, that I talked about earlier and it looked a little plasticky, it's because it is. Um, <laughs> it's very, very plasticky in its feel and uh, the fader movement especially is, is a li little bit small, so a little bit impractical to use. Um, Korg has another version called a uh, Nano Control Studio, which has a lot more features and uh, a lot nicer faders uh, that you can use. That's going to cost a little bit more. Now we talked about MIDI controllers, uh, we talked about sustain pedals, but I promised we were going to talk about MIDI uh, keyboards and pianos. And um, I've been recommending myself this uh, Alesis uh, uh, keyboard uh, with 49 keys, um, great value and um, it's going to last for a long time. It's going to enable your loved ones to play stuff in, record it in and be able to edit it afterwards and, and do a, a, open up a whole new world of possibilities. Now, this is going to be a little bit more catered toward mixing or uh, heavy music production. But uh, one thing that I'm uh, missing right now in my home setup that I don't have here, I have it in my main studio, but not here at home, is a way to control parameters within the uh, program that I'm using. A really nice uh, product that enables you to do that is uh, Pretonus's fader port. I remember buying a fader port when I first started out, and uh, since then they've upgraded it with a lot of uh, nice features. This really big 100 millimeter fader is motorized and you can do uh, volume adjustments, uh, automation, uh, and a lot of different start and stop, do recording, and doing a lot of different settings on it. So that's a very nice product to get. I also talked about Sonarworks earlier. Uh, if your loved one uh, maybe already has a studio or has some studio monitors, but is in a room that isn't perfect, which uh, no room is perfect for sound, you can get this product that comes with a measurement mic that actually enables you to uh, measure the room and kind of try to flatten out uh, the room and enable you to make better decisions in that room. And uh, I, I've got this product and I can't stop talking about it. I think it's a great, great investment uh, for the serious music produ producer or composer. And lastly, let's talk a little bit about headsets. Uh, I've tried a lot of different headsets. <clears throat> you need to think about a couple of things when you're buying a headset. One of the biggest thing is whether or not it's open or closed. If you're going to use it for recording, you need a closed headset. If you're going to use a headset 
only for mixing and you already have a closed headset, then a open back headset is awesome. And it's gonna enable you to sit for longer and take better care of your ears. So for the closed back headphones, I'm recommending the Biodynamic 770 Pro. Uh, that they're great and really comfy. And for the open back headphones, I'm gonna recommend uh, something that's probably outside of the price range of a lot of people, but it's the Sennheiser 650s. And uh, these are like top of the line for headphones. It's as good as it gets. If you want to really, really give your loved ones something uh, that is going to be greatly appreciated, that is the way to go. All right, that's my full list of tips for uh, things to buy for a music producer or a composer. Hopefully you found something in there in the different price points that uh, you'd be able to use or found some inspiration as to what, what else you could uh, buy. If so, I would love to uh, hear what you found in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. A free thing that you can do for your loved one is to tell them to subscribe to this channel to get more awesome tips about music production and composing. So make sure to do that as well. And I'll be back soon with a new video and until then 